Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is video number five in our series about IC packaging. Uh, today we're going to start to take a look at the manufacturing process for, for packaging. Uh, now, the manufacturing process is very long and it has lots of different areas, so today we're going to be focusing on how the interconnections are made for an IC package. Now the p manufacturing process, like I said, has lots of different areas, some of which are circuit design and printing, wafer fabrication, and capsulant and uh, testing. And we'll talk about some of these in the future. Uh, we've already talked about some of the traditional and more modern types of packaging. But today we're going to be focusing merely on the interconnections. Now we have three main types of interconnections. Uh, which are wire bond. Now wire bond is pretty self-explanatory. It has a wire that is bonded to the two different pads that it wants to make the interconnection between. And uh, there's different types of wire bond, but the basis is you have a wire that will physically connect both both places. The second type of interconnection is the flip chip. Now the flip chip doesn't use any wires. It, it relies on these solder balls to make the interconnections. These solder balls are placed on the chip and the chip is flipped upside down so that the, the solder balls face into the package substrate and that's how the connections are made. And finally we have the interposer. Now we have a full video talking about the interposer. If you want to know more I encourage you to go and take a look at that. But the interposer is a layer that lies between the chips and the substrate that connects the chips uh, among each other and it also connects the chips to the inputs and outputs on the package substrate. So starting we have the wire bond. The wire bond is an interconnection between the die and the packaging using wires. And the wire bond mainly uses gold, copper, aluminum and silver. Now gold used to be the standard back in the day but recently copper has been gaining more popularity mainly due to its uh, lower cost when compared to gold, which can be expensive. So in order to lower the cost, people try to use copper and it's also a pretty good conductor and it does its job really well. So that's what the trend's looking like. However, depending on the application, one material or another one might be more suitable. Um, wire bond is the most cost effective and flexible type of uh, interconnection. It's very easy, it's very cheap to make, uh, it's hard to to have faults in it, it's very reliable and simple to implement. So it's usually a go-to if you have the space and, and you want to develop a chip um, uh, that doesn't have as high of a cost, then wire bond is a very good technology for it. It's also the older one of these three technologies that's been used for a long time. Um, however, if you want very high-end uh, high, very high-end purposes for your chip, then you might consider some of the other technologies which allow for a higher density of interconnects and higher performance. Now the wire bonds use pressure, heat, and ultrasonic energy in order to weld the metals to the pads and uh, and they use different types of and different techniques of bonding which we're going to be seeing in this slide over here. Uh, the first technique that we're going to talk about is ball bonding. You now ball bonding is pretty simple. They use mainly heat to form a, a ball of metal at the end of the wire that then gets connected onto the pad and then the wire just goes out vertically from there. Uh, this means that there is no directionality. The wire just goes out vertically and then you can choose to bend the wire in whichever way you want so that you can make the other connection wherever it's necessary. Uh, the second type of bonding that we're going to talk about is wedge bonding. Now, wedge bonding uh, uses mainly pressure to to press the wire against the pad, and and this type of bonding does need to be aligned. It uses some aligning tools, and it has some directionality. And as you can see from these pictures, you need to make sure that the wire is pointing in the direction of where the other bond is being made to make sure that. Uh, that the wire can actually reach its, its desired location. Uh, we're also going to talk about stud and bump bonding. Now stud and bump bonding uh, just creates a little bump on the surface of the materials. It doesn't really need wires 
it just creates it's similar to bowl bonding but instead of doing it at the end of the wire it just connects two surfaces like that and it can also connect some perpendicular surfaces like we can see in this picture over here um, to make sure that some uh, some components can be mounted like that. Now we also wanted to note uh, that well we said that some of these technologies can use heat ultrasonic energy or pressure sometimes depending on the material or the application you may need to use a combination of them and when you use thermal energy and ultrasonic energy then that is classified as thermosonic bonding. Now moving on to flip chip uh, the flip chip, like we mentioned, connects the semiconductor devices to the board using solder bumps. Now, these solder bumps are deposited on the on pads that will be on top of the chips, and then the chip is uh, flipped upside down, as you know the name the name indicates, and the the solder bumps will be facing down against the substrate. Uh, now, these pads obviously have to be aligned. Uh, to some match, uh, some matching pads on the substrate to make sure that the connections are made where they need to be made. Um, but basically, it means that the chip has no no real top or I guess bottom after you after you flip it because it'll be facing directly directly the packet substrate um, or the board. Now um, these chips have lots of advantages in terms of performance they are a lot smaller and a lot higher density of interconnects than the wire bonds um, they bring more bandwidth and more performance th and also thanks to the shorter interconnects and higher density so these are more suitable for high-end high-end chips that are looking to maximize performance it, although however you also have to pay a higher cost for them in terms of manufacturing process, the flip chips are pretty straightforward. You first create the IC on the wafer, um, and then you have to metalize the pads on the chip surface. So then you'll have each, instead of having leads, you will just have different pads that go on the surface instead of going around the perimeter like it did with the wire bonds. Um, now on top of each of these pads, you're going to get the solder bolts uh, deposited on the pads. Once you have the solder bolts, you're going to flip the chip and align it with your board and make sure that each of the solder bolts is aligned with a matching set of pads on the board. And and once they are aligned and once the connection is made, uh, we use some extra energy to slightly melt the solder bolts to make sure that they weld with the pads on the board and make sure that the connection is made and this part this part of the process is called this reflow and then once the connection is finally made um, they use an underfill um, that's an isolating adhesive that will make sure that the that the solder bolts don't interfere with each other that there's no unwanted connections between them and and to make sure that the the chip is solid and that it's going to stay in place and so finally our third type of interconnection is the interposer. Now the interposer is a layer that goes between the packet substrate and the dies. Uh, however, it's more than just a structural component of the chip. Uh, like we mentioned, it's also an interconnection and it can connect the chips to one another, but it can also connect the chips to the packet substrate, um, to the input and output ports to make sure that they can receive and send the, the information to where they need to be. Now there's different types of interposer and the most common one is silicon interposer but there's also glass or polymer interposer. Now the the silicon interposer has the highest bandwidth capacity and also the however it comes with the highest cost. Um, the polymer interposer has the lowest cost but it, it also has some lower performance and the glass interposer is somewhere in between uh, but it also has the added advantage that it's see-through as we can see in this picture over here as compared to the silicon interposer so that the alignment uh, of the vias will be a lot easier because you can see exactly where they are. Now the biggest advantage of the interposer is that it offers shorter interconnections, higher bandwidth and better overall performance um, because the vias going straight up and, and the redistribution layer at the top that we'll see in a second make it so that the interconnections are a lot shorter 
bringing with um, a higher performance. Uh, now the interposer can be classified into active or passive interposer. And an active interposer is, an, is a layer that will have embedded some fully functional chips in them and and they it's a way of saving space and a way of uh, of integrating some functionality into your interposer layer and then there's also the passive interposer which serves merely as an interconnection layer and it will just make the necessary connections between the chips and the inputs and output ports now it is worth noting that the interposer is a different type of connection uh, than the flip chip because the interposer is usually used to connect uh, chips that have multi multi-function where they use heterogeneous integration of different types of chips as we can see in this second picture over here uh, it's sometimes used in combination with flip chip so there will be flip chip uh, ICs on the top of the interposer layer and then those use the flip chip technology to connect to the interposer layer which will then connect those to the other chips or to the substrate and to the inputs and outputs so it's a it's a combined work here where one of them uh, carries one function and the other one carries the other one and between them they allow it for some of the more advanced types of packaging now there's a couple of interconnection types inside of the silicon interposer or glass or polymer um, and the main one is the the through vias sometimes called TSV um, as in through silicon inter uh, through silicon vias and now the TSV are some vertical copper pathways that go straight through the interposer and these are the ones that make the vertical connection between the substrate and the dies um, they can uh, carry through some information or sometimes they carry through power uh, they can really do different functions then there's also the redistribution layer uh, that uh, lies on top and bottom of the of the interposer layer and these are the horizontal connections uh, these are the ones that are in charge of rerouting the information and the power to where they need to be so that everything arrives at the right at the right pin of the of the chip so that the information reaches where it needs to be but then we also have some other type of uh, interconnection which are the bridges now the bridges are something we can see over here they're an in package interconnect for multi die packages and what they do is they will connect one chip to the other one uh, now these bridges can be used in comp uh, they can be part of the interposer and they can connect one chip to the next one but sometimes we've seen that they have the potential of becoming an independent component and this is as shown by the EMIB which is the embedded multi die interconnect bridge which is a technology developed by Intel and we have an example of this technology over here in our second picture where uh, they thought that the chip didn't really require the, all the advantages of the interposer and they didn't need the highest technology of the interposer um, that, that, that the interposer can bring uh, so instead they just have a regular package substrate however they implemented small patches of silicon uh, where they have these bridges that will connect the chips to one another without the need of having the full silicon interposer. Now this makes this technology a lot cheaper than the interposer because the interposer can be really hard to manufacture and it's not as reliable as other technologies during the manufacturing process so it can be complicated. So in terms of manufacturing we have uh, photolithography which is the masking and pattern generation they they lay out where the vias are going to be then they do the etching where they uh, they etch the the vias and they leave the space for them then they leave the oxi uh, the oxidizing to occur so that the silicon turns into silicon oxide creating an isolation between uh, the copper that's going to be inside and the silicon interposer then there's the position and filling where they have a little dielectric barrier and they fill the etches with copper uh, then there's chemical metal polishing and uh, they will polish the top exposing only the VS making sure that there's no connections between them so that they can be isolated uh, they also create the RDL uh, or the redistribution layer and this is a this is a very layered process they they lay it down one layer at a time and they have little like similar processes to this where they do the etching and 
and all of that one layer at a time to make sure that they can make all of the horizontal interconnections. And then finally they will do backside processing where some of these same processes go where they put the redistribution layer on the bottom as well to make sure that the interposer is fully functional. Now um, during some of these processes we can see some testing and we can also see some, testis uh, t some testing after the processes are done. Uh, so some of the in process tests can be the wire pull test where they will use a little hook and they will pull on the wire to make sure that it can resist uh, some of this pull strength and see if the wire connection is a little bit too weak. Um, they can also do the die shear test where they will use a shear tool to push horizontally on the die to see if the die will disconnect from the pad or if it will remain there under pressure. Uh, and then of course we also have some post-process tests like temperature cycling where they will uh, subject the chip to uh, temperature changes over time to make sure that the chip can uh, can stand those. Uh, there's also x-ray inspection where you can check after you're done with your process whether there's some some interconnections that are broken or some faults in them. Uh, there's another method called scanning acoustic microscopy which is another way of looking inside of the chip once you've already finished the manufacturing process and then there's also your standard electrical test to make sure that your chip is working as intended. So let's see a quick overview of what we talked about. We have three types of interconnects the wire bond, the flip chip and the interposer. The wire bond is the one with the lowest cost it's also the easiest to implement and it's uh, very reliable um, and therefore that drives the price down of, of how easy it is to make it then it's going to cost less. However it does offer you less density of input and outputs and therefore less bandwidth. Uh, it's the type of interconnect that has the least performance um, but depending on what the purpose of the chip is it, it might be good enough. It also requires more space because as you can see the leads go out from the perimeter uh, whereas other types of chips use the entire area of the chip for the interconnections so they will require a lot more space the wires take more space than just the solder balls and sometimes the leads inside the packets can also take more space so it's not the most efficient but it's cheap it's effective and it's easy to implement the flip chip uh, has about a medium cost it's more expensive than the wire bond but not as hard to implement as the interposer it still offers a much higher uh, density of input and output than the wire bond and it, it's already a big up and a big increase on the bandwidth and the performance for these chips. And it also requires a lot less space than the wire bond does. And then finally the interposer, it's very high cost, it's hard to manufacture, hard to implement and it requires a lot of attention to detail, a lot of a specialist and that drives the cost up by a lot. However, it's also the one that provides you with the most advantages performance-wise. It gives you the highest density of uh, interconnections, of inputs and outputs, and then it provides with the highest uh, bandwidth out of these three. And it also requires the least amount of space because it's just a layer that will go underneath your chip and uh, it'll, it will only increase your chip size vertically slightly. But overall, it doesn't use that much space very high performance and it's one of the most advanced types of interconnections that we use in packaging today. So that is all we have for today. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed it and if that was the case then I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.